Okay, okay, my dear. So it's time for another video, another exercise. So this time we change gears and we go into logic. We have to make a function uh, that displays n or p depending on the integer sign entered as a parameter. If negative, display n. If positive, display p. It is kind of trivial, right? So you need to know what is logic and how if else else if work. Okay, pretty simple stuff. As usual, we can use the right function. Okay, let's dive into it. As usual, I include my file Unix standard so I can use my right function. And then I go into creating, so declaring and implementing my function. ft is negative. This function doesn't give me back anything, so I have a void type here, and it takes an integer as an input that I've called e, which is the which is kind of the standard way to call an integer. Then I very simply do my if then else statement. You can pretty much read it like plain vanilla English, right? You have if e is less than zero, write in the standard output the uppercase n. Else, it means otherwise, write in the standard output the uppercase p. And that's it, right? If you understand how if then else statements work, you're done. It's pretty simple. So this goes back to syntax understanding. There is not so much to explain here. You just have to really watch tutorials that explain the, how the conditional statement work and it's gonna be very, very trivial for you. So let's try out this code. I have my main function here, which call the function three times with 42, minus 42 and zero, okay? So it should write p because this one is measured than zero, n because this one is less than zero and p because this is zero okay p and p should be the output okay let's compile the code the 42 way so with all the flags and boom let's launch and as you can see i have p and p exactly what i was expecting okay now i wanted you to understand uh, a very important concept and not a trivial one like if then else condition statement syntax you see this if statement here this command is gonna create a block. What do I mean by that? Well, this is a pro way of writing the if then else uh, without the curly braces. Because when you have only one statement inside the block, you can omit the curly braces. It just makes the code shorter, but I would argue that maybe it's not as readable as it would be with the curly braces, right? Now I'm gonna write this code with the braces so you will clearly see the blocks that I'm talking about. Now, okay, now you can see the blocks. You have this if that opens this block, a block which contains only one line. Then we have our else statement that opens another block, as well as only with one line. Now I want to share you a trick that uh, allowed me to understand better this concept of blocks. And the trick comes from Harry Potter. I'm sure you remember Professor Moody, the one with the strange eye. You recall the scene in which he was stuck inside the box, inside a very fancy box, a box which was nested inside the box, which was nested inside the box, and so forth. A big fancy series of boxes nested one into each other. The professor was stuck inside the most nested block, right? At the very bottom of this magical box. Well, let's try to see the boxes inside our code. We have this function, right? The one I declared and implemented. It is a box. It is like a fancy big block with an interface. Inside this box, I have other boxes. I just told you, like I have this one, this if, and then I have this other one, this else box. These boxes are nested inside the, the bigger box, the bigger, the function itself, but they are separate. They are two separate boxes. Inside the box, of course, I can have other boxes. For example, I can make if it is equal to 42, for example, just uh, writes on the standard output so the number one uh, the number 42 and two bytes right two bytes because i have a string with two bytes and then the semicolon okay so here i have another box as you understood wrote in this profession kind of wrongish so i just write this box as it should be written okay now you can clearly see the biggest box outside, which is the function itself, the first if, which is another block, which contains another block, which is another if, a nested if, okay? So what's the deal with these boxes? Let's run this code, this one with only two calls. The first is 42 and the second is, is minus 42, okay? 
right quit okay let's compile and run ah yeah there's an output p and then so why i don't have 42 i made the condition right to write 42 in the standard output if the number was 42 let's check better our code as you can see i've put this block inside another block which is this one you can access this block only if i is less than zero which is not the case with 42 right i will never arrive at this level of code because i haven't passed this first condition so this block for me is never accessible i hope you are getting the point in order to access the block i need to pass this test which is not the case so indeed my variable e is equal to 42 but i can never access this block because it's because it's nested inside uh, an if statement which closes the door if you want now i changed the code a little bit so i've shifted my block if i is equal to 42 into my else so all the time that i is major or equal zero so when uh, i is going to be 42 it is going to be major or equal zero so i will get into this block so let's compile and then run so i have 42 written in my standard output and then of course pn as usual i'm totally sure that you understood this concept of blocks and uh, for the conditional it's very simple it's very straightforward and uh, yeah that's basically it i want to give you one last suggestion for the this concept of blocks that will stick with you forever i'm sure okay so i created a new function which is called block function block doesn't take anything doesn't give me back anything and doesn't take anything as input i declared a char name n and the value is equal to eight then i created this block yes i can create a block just randomly opening and closing curly braces so i have a block and inside this block i call the function write asking to flush the char in the standard output okay so it is a pretty simple function what do you think will happen the function write will be able to find the char n which is outside the box let's try out compile and run okay perfect i have my character i have my char 8 in the standard output. perfect it works so my write function was able to find the variable even though the function itself was nested inside the block now let's reverse the code as you can see i have already my warning here that is that is telling me hey dude what the heck are you trying to do i've put my char this time inside the block and i've called my write function at the level of the function block right so this write function is outside outside the char block right let's try out this time uh, of course it won't compile it's telling me there is a mistake and declare an identifier n so the function write doesn't really know what n is it doesn't see the variable n now let's tweak a little bit the code i'm gonna insert the write function inside the block itself then compile run here we comes now it works so i've shifted my write function this time inside the block and this time it works now again i just create another block and here i call my write again in the standard output so i'm gonna write my beautiful buffer okay that's it so let's try to finally understand what the heck is going on so i have my function block which is a block inside this function i have another block which starts at line 23 and ends at line 29 inside this block i have a declaration of a variable which is this one n equals to eight then i open another block which is this one that contains the write function the write function this time tries to write on the standard output a variable which is not inside the block itself okay let's try out this time what do you think is going to happen let's compile and then just run it works as you can see i have in my standard output the value eight okay so it seems that this time even though i don't have the variable inside my block here i can use it no matter what so at this level where do i am well i am inside the most nested block right i am really at the bottom of my fancy series of blocks like the one i was talking about uh, the professor moody of harry potter so how do you recall this trick how do you recall the rule that the things that are inside the most nested block can see all the things outside well recall it in this fashion so i want you to understand uh, once for all this concept at this level of the code so inside my most nested box 
I have, I have Professor Moody. Professor Moody, why do you recall him? But, well, you recall him because he had this strange eye, right? With his eye, he could see everything, right? A place to put your chewing gum besides the underside of your desk, Mr. Finnegan! Okay, this is the same with the code. So, <laughs> the most nested box can see everything that is outside him. So, I have my Professor Moody here, in this case my function write, that can see everything, can see outside his box. He can see the variable n, which is outside. He could have seen uh, anything else that was like, at this level I could have had another number, which is like, uh, I don't know, 37. Well, Professor Moody, aka my write function, can see this variable outside, okay? So, take home message. The most nested, nested box can see everything which is outside him. The box which is exactly one level upper respective to the most nested one can see everything that is upper him, but not what is under it, okay? It is kind of tricky to understand. Uh, I hope that my parallel with uh, Harry Potter and Professor Moody kind of stick with your mind and you will recall forever how it works. So Professor Moody can see everything. The boxes outside Professor Moody can see upstairs, but not downstairs, okay? That's basically it for the blocks politics in C. I repeat, I leave a link in the description. It is a simple concept, but it is part of the fundamentals. If you want to build a skyscraper, you need to have very rock solid fundamentals. So understand the blocks and you are already on a good position. Okay. Okay. That's basically it for this very simple exercise and maybe see you on the next one. Okay. Bye.